to bring you nationwide from Abuja, the nation's capital. And my name is Oge Chipol. Thanks for joining us. Rising in support of President Muhammad Buhari, APC chairman, in the 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory, said that he elated at the news of the recovery of the president, stressing that his health is critical to achieve on the vision of the party for a better Nigeria. The forum at a meeting with acting president Emil Shibajo in Abuja discussed at length the situation of the country and the health status of the president. Chairman of the forum speak to State House correspondent Jideo Difade at the end of the meeting. And we are very impressed with uh, his explanation and we'll go back to our various states and let the people know that uh, the government has a very good intention uh, and uh, we should um, be part and parcel of the government in order to ensure that the poor people of this country are getting better deal. And uh, in a nutshell, we are very happy for what we had from government and uh, we intend to carry it to our states. A national summit in justice is to be organized by the federal government as part of an effort to draw up a national policy on justice. Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami announced this in Abuja. Femi Okewe reports. The summit, which is to be held from the 8th to the 10th of August, is meant to bring together stakeholders in the justice sector to consider, adopt, and validate the draft national policy on justice. The National Policy on Justice is a document which will harmonize and integrate the various reforms and other initiatives into a clearly defined political philosophy with respect to justice delivery in Nigeria. Minister of Justice says this is necessary for an emerging society that wishes to improve on its justice system. The need for a National Policy on Justice arose due to the imperative of building consensus among justice sector institutions and practitioners for the purpose of addressing collectively the various challenges confronting the justice system in the country. Participants will be drawn from all justice-related sectors of Nigeria as well as states in the Federation. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NJ News. The Senate Committee on Water Resources has met with the Global Water Partnership to synergize on how to chart a new course for the water resources sector. National Assembly correspondent Ivan Yozumba reports on the agency's engagement at the National Assembly. The National Water Resources Bill 2017 is an aggregate of so many bills trying to mainstream all the sectors of the water resources in Nigeria to make sure they have a single law that takes care of various interests as far as water resources development is concerned. The Senate leader, Ahmed Lawan, who said the bill has passed second reading in the House of Representatives, stressed that the Senate intends to start work on it after the recess in September. We're going to facilitate and fast track the passage of, of this bill because, to me, this is supposed to be the major legislation uh, on water in Nigeria for this administration. What for long we didn't have a national water policy, and a lot of water agencies have no low governing existence, their existence. 
The Director General, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, said the agency is conscious of the role of integrated water resources in the promotion of improved water management practice. We often say that we have abundant water resources in the country, but if you look at um, issues like climate change, increasing population, um, if these water resources is not properly managed, then of course there will be stress in this sector. The team had a similar meeting with the Chairman House Committee on Water Resources. The water is life, and water affects every single individual household. Any government that we have a pass mark was a pass the water test. It is expected that if the bill is passed, it will improve the funding, regulation, and provide the needed synergy by different chairs of government when it comes to policy implementation. From the National Assembly, Ifang Izumba, NT News. In the meantime, the federal government has granted pioneer status to the creative industry, aimed at transforming it for job creation. A statement signed by the Special Assistant to the Minister of Information and Culture, Shegu Adeyemi, says the decision to grant pioneer status to the industry is in fulfillment of the promise made by the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, at the opening of the Creative Industry Financing Conference in Lagos. Anthony Fawson has a report. Pioneer status is granted to companies making investment in qualifying industries and products. They will be exempted from the payment of corporate income tax and withholding tax on dividends from pioneer profits for an initial period of three years, extendable for one or two additional years. This pioneer status for the creative industry covers music production, publishing and distribution, as well as online digital distributions, photography, production and post-production of digital content for motion pictures, videos, television programs, commercials, distribution and exhibition of digital movies, animation, videos, TV programs and commercials. The minister stressed that it is a shot in the arm for the creative industry and it will definitely form as a catalyst for investment in the sector. It is also the answer to the quest to support the establishment of world-class studios in Nigeria for the production and post-production of movies and music videos. He stressed that the need to grant pioneer status to the creativity industry as well as tackle piracy of creative works were among the key issues raised by participants at the Creative Industry Financing Conference. He maintained that this is born out of the importance the federal government attaches to the industry, adding that an anti-piracy committee comprising representatives of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, industry stakeholders and the police has been set up to work out the modality for tackling piracy in a lasting and sustainable manner. He expressed gratitude to the stakeholders in the creative industry for supporting the federal government in its effort that have succeeded in putting the industry in the front burner of the economy and made it a key plank of the government's economic diversification policy. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Nationwide joins Lagos Network Centre, our first port of call, where Jennifer is standing by with a study on the rehabilitation of Osho, the International Airport Road, and other stories. Over to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Ogechi. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Lagos State Governor Akim Wumi Ambode has assured Lagos residents that work on the proposed expansion and reconstruction of the Osho the International Airport Road would commence next month. The governor gave the assurance at the third quarterly town hall meeting, the eighth in the series, held at the Badore Ferry Terminal, Lagos. Nosa Usula reports. Acting President Professor Yemi Oshibaju in May 2017 approved that the Oshodi International Airport Road be handed over to the Lagos State Government for total reconstruction. According to Governor Ambody, the construction which has already been awarded would see the transformation of the road from four lanes to ten lanes from Oshodi to the International Airport with interchange and flyover that would drop commuters to the local airport. We continue to identify areas of intervention to ease traffic congestion and stimulate economic activities in the central axis. Ambody also disclosed that plans are already underway to commence the construction of 181 local government roads next month. 
The governor, however, urged residents to adopt new attitudes to disposing waste and desist from dumping in drainages and canals, assuring that the government would provide adequate beans to discourage indiscriminate dumping. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. 89 radio stations across the country have violated the National Broadcasting Commission's regulations on transmitter installation. Director General of the Commission, Ishak Modibo Kawu, disclosed this at an interactive forum with heads of radio stations, say any violations of the Commission's rule, if not checked, will attract stiff san sanctions. Joy Ken Abakoya has details. The meeting at the instance of the National Broadcasting Commission is to discuss issues affecting radio broadcasting and proper solutions. One of the major issues the NBC Director General Ishak Modibo Kao says is the procurement and installation of transmitters by radio stations beyond the two kilowatts approved for city-based FM stations. This, he says, has resulted in frequency jam. As of this morning, we have a list of about 89 different stations where there is this problem. While insisting that violators of NBC regulations will be sanctioned appropriately, the Director General assured that the Commission will firmly and fairly regulate broadcasting to put an end to impunity in the system. There will be sanctions. We are going to work with the Nigerian security system to ensure that light, uh, transmitters are beyond the power that they were given will be taken out. Some radio station operators say the outcome of the meeting will help restore sanity to the airwaves. Engaging is very important so that the operators and the uh, regulators can be at the same frequency so they can have a healthy broadcast industry in Nigeria. People should observe what is there in their license. If it is a two kilowatt transmitter, I think people should make sure that they are using a two kilowatt transmitter. If the fact that they've called us to come discuss, rub minds and come to positive conclusions. It's very laudable. It means that they, are, they know that we are critical stakeholders in the broadcast environment. The meeting attracted stakeholders in the broadcast industry from across the country. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakuya, NTN News. Not less than 50 inmates of the medium prison Kirikiri have commenced vocational training aimed at promoting entrepreneurship culture, culminating in their release from prison before the end of the year. The project tagged Life Recovery and Pre-Release Empowerment Program is organized by the Prison Fellowship of Nigeria in collaboration with Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency in Lagos. Kanek Beluge has the details. Recovering and pre-release empowerment program stems from the federal government initiative aimed at reforming prison inmates and making them productive ahead of their release from prisons. The program therefore seeks to broaden their capacity in running small enterprises with a view to contributing their quota to national development. Skill acquisition in laundry services, shoemaking, barbing, fashion design and bead making are major focus of the training. We discover that when you come into the prisons, you support the inmates, you do everything you can, but no sooner they go out there, they find themselves isolated. Beyond sowing this seed, you need to create a conducive environment. This is a very, very laudable initiative, and uh, we need to impact on, this, on their lives. And uh, the essence of coming to prison is to change them for better. Deputy Controller of Prisons in charge of female prison, Lizzie Ekpendu, who represented the controller of prisons, urged the inmates to take advantage of the vocational training to improve themselves and shown as capable of derailing their ambition. The prison service does not only let go the, 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 the inmates, which uh, are referred to as residents and children. We don't just train them in various uh, uh, capacities, but we also make sure that when they're out of here, we follow them up because life is not easy. So we do keep in touch with them. More than 420 inmates have so far benefited from the Life Recovery and Pre-Release Empowerment Program, which started in 2009. Why 300 of this number have regained their freedom from the prison? In Lagos, Ken Ebeluge, NTA News. Now to the environment.
As part of its corporate social responsibility role, Julius Bega Nigeria PLC has promised to assist the Nigerian Television Authority NTA Lagos Network Center in clearing of the canal that runs through the comp its compound for free flow of storm water. Olu Yemisi Dada, a delegate from Julius Berger, Nigeria PLC, stated this during a courtesy visit to the management of the NTA Lagos Network Center. Rotimi Oluwagbemi compiled the report. The last month flash flood experienced by almost all the states across Nigeria as a result of torrential rainfall did not spare Nigerian Television Authority Lagos Network Center. The station was forced to shut down for two days as a result of the flood which took over the compound, especially the transmission room. The situation prompted the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, accompanied by the NTA Director General, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, to pay an on-the-spot assessment visit to the station. Ever since, various organizations, including Lagos State Government, represented by the Commissioner for Environment, Babatunde Adejari, have also visited the station to assess the situation and find ways of tackling the issue of flood on Victoria Island access. One of such organizations is the Julius Berger Nigeria PLC. The company's representative, Oluye Misi Dada, says the visit is meant to brief the NTA Lagos Network Center on some of the steps embarked upon by her organization to address the flood issue on the island, including NTA premises. She said that the ongoing clearing of the drainage within the station is part of measures to proffer lasting solutions. We are trying to make Lagos a flood-free state. So that is the reason we are doing it. So we started from the Nepal quarters up to the NTA premises down to the Nava yard. The zonal director, NTA Lagos Network Center, Chidi Olukal, lauded Julius Berger, Nigeria PLC's intervention. He said that the exercise will go a long way to address flood within the NTA compound, Victoria Island, and its environs. The issue of flood has been very worrisome. And, uh, for you to intervene at this level, to even commit your resources and your facility, trying to clear the area is a uh, welcome development. There was an inspection of the clearing exercise by the NTA Lagos Network Center management team. Now those are the stories others are from Lagos. It's back to Ogechi for more on the news. Thank you, Jennifer. Moving on now, the First Lady, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, has commended the people of Imo State, especially the women, for the initiative of August Meeting Funfair as a means of bringing the people together to discuss developmental issues in the state. Your zeal to organize this event annually and create such a forum whereby women come together to discuss issues on social, economic, and political development of our society, particularly on conflict resolution and peaceful coexistence. Among others, is highly commendable. Anyone speaking anything outside the unity of this country is indeed all on his or her own. Nigeria must remain a united country. The gallant, beautiful, and dependable Imo women from the 27 local government are equally, in their own way, building solid bridges of friendship in our communities, and I cannot thank you or take you for granted. <laughs> The meeting focuses on grassroots initiatives and the crucial roles women play in societal development. Are you a trained, qualified and certified teacher in the country, still in a teaching career? If not, get certified by the relevant body or be flushed out of the system. This is coming as Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria, TRCN, threatens to make good his vow to read the profession of quarks next year. Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of the Council, Professor Jose Ajibo, yes, that this at a media panel, Abdullahi Musa Suleja, has the report. It might no longer be news that the standard of education has fallen in Nigeria. One of the reasons being that some people who have no business being teachers have taken up the profession. Speaking to journalists on consolidating the gains of his predecessors, 
The registrar, Professor Ajiboye, said under his leadership, Nigerian teachers are no longer being subjected to any form of test, examination, or looked down in the international community. We have what you call International Teaching Regulatory Authority. As a body, we have agreed that when you see a letter from a particular country, you recognize that particular letter because that letter will indicate the qualification and the level at which that particular individual can teach. From Canada alone, we received 24 of such requests. Professor Ajiboye said the council made frantic effort toward restoring the dignity of the Nigerian teachers and the quality of the profession. He said the council's aim is to match quality, discipline, professionalism, reward and dignity with international standard. There is a mandatory period within which you must get qualified. And if you fail to do so, we are not the one that will send you out. You are the one sending yourself out of teaching profession. Nigerians, I want to see how this promise will be fulfilled. If that is achieved, the country will be better for it. In Abuja, Abdullahi Musa Suleja, NTA News. Well, I'm still watching nationwide. Though it's set to reconstruct a 200-kilometer road, Agatha is standing by with the details in Benin. Hello, Agatha, over to you. Thank you, Gwichi. Good afternoon and welcome to Benin. Edo State Government is to reconstruct over 400 kilometer roads across the state. Governor Gordon Obasik stated this when he received the report of the Technical Committee constituted to review network of roads constructed in the old Midwest region. Good luck in Aini reports. The construction of necessary infrastructure across the state is one major pursuit of the Obasaki led administration. It is in a bid to actualize this that Governor Obasaki inaugurated a technical committee on the 31st of January this year with the responsibility to look at the conditions of some identified major roads in the states constructed during the Midwest region. Governor Obasaki said though some of the roads have been advertised for reconstruction, priority will be by their economic potentials to the states. And to see the state of those roads and what we can do about them if we want to bring life, economic life, back to those communities. We are now going to go to the next phase of determining how to redesign these roads. Chairman of the committee, Erasmus Osaho, said about six roads which include Old Benin Lagos, Benin Abraka, Benin Agbo, Benin Auchi, and Benin Akure Road were examined. In Benin, um, good luck in any NT News. And the nightmare being experienced by motorists, especially truck drivers, at the Ekwama axis of the Benin Okene Highway has persisted despite appeals by the Senate Committee on Works to the controller to carry out palliative work on the field portions to ease the pains of motorists. Kelvin Iwunwai has report. For over a year now, motorists plying the Benin Auchi Okene Highway have endured frustrations at the Ekwama and Iwu ends of the road with truck drivers the worst hit. I don't know what is happening to us. Look at my vehicle, all the way from uh, 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 Onichubo to here. It took me almost six hours. But this is the road that I'm supposed to apply just within one hour I'm here. The road is highly strategic, but now because of the bad state of this road now, vehicles are now tempted to ply through the town. And now most of the roads inside the town are now bad. The contractor, Dan Tatasawo, handling the dualization project has not surfaced on the site since last year. But when the Senate Committee on Works recently inspected the project, the deputy chairman of the committee, Clifford Odia, who led the members and officials of the Federal Ministry of Works, Power and Housing on the inspection, appealed to the contractor to carry out palliative work on the faith portions at Iwu Junction, Opoji Junction, and Big Joe Aziz at Ekpoma, pending the release of funds. However, two days after the committee's visit, the contractor again disappeared from the site leaving the fate of the motorists hanging in the balance. We had the, the dry season, nobody did anything. The busy Benin Auchi Okene Highway is strategic because it links the southern part of the country to the north. In Ekpoma, Kelvin Awunwaye, NTA News. The need for Muslim Umar and women to participate in politics with a view to contributing to national development has been stressed. 
These formed the nucleus of the Ekiti Muslims political summit held in Adoikiti. Ayodeji Ogunshaki has details. A lecture titled, The Governors of Ekiti State and the Lords of Ekiti Muslims, a political scientist from Ekiti State University, Dr. Assis Folayan, enumerated lack of direct and indirect involvement in the state politics by Muslims as factors that must be addressed and emphasized that the virtues of Islam should come to play when the opportunity comes to serve, either by elections or appointments. We need to strive and struggle for it. In doing so, we need to adopt the legitimate means offered by democracy. The President General League of Imams and Nafas in the Southwest, Edo and Data States, Alaiji Jami Ukeuliri and other Muslim leaders called for artisanal change among Muslims in the state to maintain an active participation in politics. If you are not there, if you do not participate, nobody will uh, recognize you. The climax of the event is special prayers for a quick recovery and return of President Muhammad Dubari and continued peaceful coexistence in the state and Nigeria in general. In Adwekiti, Ayodi Jogunshaki, NC News. And to security matters, the Delta State Police Commissioner, Zana Ibrahim, has attributed the reduction in violent crimes in the state in the last six months to the command's synergy with sister agencies, the vigilante groups, and timely information from members of the public. Rosemary Omani reports. Among those predated were two lady suspects who were found in possession of a phone belonging to the wife of the Delta State Commissioner for Special Duties, Henry Siakbara, who was kidnapped. Also predated were suspects specialized in kidnapping women. They were napped after an operation in Asaba, where a lady at Jesus Saves Road in her shop was robbed with her customer. Her car was later recovered in Gumbe State. Two suspects, popularly called Timaya, were paraded, having been linked with most kidnap and herdsmen killings within Kwale and Ogume. Some of these herdsmen who feel embittered by the activities of the criminal ones amongst them now came and identified these two suspects as the bad eggs amongst the herdsmen. And they attributed all these crises in Kwale, Ogume, Aziz, the killings between, you know, the herdsmen and the communities. They are attributing them to the activities of these two. Items recovered include two jeeps, guns, cartridges, phones, and cutlasses, amongst others. In Asaba, I am Rosemary Omani, NTA News. That ends our package. Back to Abuja for more nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Agatha. Moving on now, as Nigerian Muslim pilgrims continue to fly into the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACAN, intensified efforts to enlighten pilgrims on the usage of facilities at the five-star hotels where they are housed. 5,594 pilgrims from Zamfara, Sakoto, Kaduna, Gombe, and F-City have arrived and are settling down to commence the religious visitations in Medina. NACON and state officials are having a hectic time explaining and demonstrating how to use the hotel facilities, such as lifts, washrooms, and how to access their rooms. Other areas that will engage the attention of Hajj officials is that of attending to their medical needs due to changing diets and weather conditions. Medical facilities have been put on standby in ambulances in case of any emergency, while NACON Medical Center is already operational. Medina has recorded Three rainfalls since Monday. More flies expected in Medina tonight. And back home, the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria says it will sustain positive partnership with the Nigerian Christian Pilgrim Commission and CPC for successful implementation of all programs. This was during our visit by State Chairman of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria on the Executive Secretary and CPC, Reverend To Uja in Abuja. The economy of Nigeria will bounce back and all the various problems that are troubling this nation through this very commission, through prayers and covenant, as that small, tiny land of Israel have not been defeated today, likewise, this country will not go down. Executive Secretary urged Nigerians 
to emulate the cordial relationship between President Muhammad Buhari and the acting president, Emir Oshibajo. God has made Nigeria for a purpose. And God's great purpose is to make Nigeria a baseline for global impact. And I urge you, I want you to know that it's our time to stand with God to establish his rule around the world. Reverend Touja advocated more partnership, involvement, and sponsorship from the church for improved pilgrimage in Nigeria. As part of its mandate to ensure the survival, growth, and integrated development of the Nigerian automotive industry using local human and material resources, the National Automotive Design and Development Council has launched a national operational standards. Kolo Mohammed reports that the council collaborated with the relevant stakeholders in development of the document. The development of National Occupational Standards, NOS, as it relates to delivery of National Vocational Qualification Framework in Nigeria, is aimed at de-emphasizing paper qualification and to promote personal skills and occupational competency. These, the council say, will enthrone competency-based technical vocational education and training. This is just the beginning. We will continue to look at uh, additional initiatives of making sure that this curriculum uh, gets uh, to be uh, applied uh, to various uh, groups, uh, formal and informal, so that uh, we have a comprehensive reach uh, throughout the country. The National Operational Standards is sets the standards for mechanics in the industry. We all know that this is one industry that have the capacity to create jobs. We have a lot of artisans. We also know that it's an industry that can do what we call light manufacturing. So there are other parts, manufacturing of officery, seats, belts, all kinds of things can come into this. When fully operational, the framework will place out-of-school children, working adults, graduates and apprentices at both formal and non-formal setting in their rightful position. In Abuja, Kolo Mohammed. NTA News. Well, this is to remind you that you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. You're watching Nationwide on NTA. We now pause for some commercials. News continues in a moment. Stick around. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. Many Nigerian children cannot afford to go to school because they live in poverty. Instead of enjoying education and its benefits, they get involved in street trading to help themselves and their families survive. The Rochester Foundation is a humanitarian organization which currently caters for over 15,000 less privileged children in high various schools all over Nigeria. The foundation has a goal to take thousands of less privileged children off the streets and provide them with free quality education from secondary school to the university as part of her Vision 2030. Admission forms are free and available online and at all Rochester Foundation colleges at Oweri, Jos, Ibadan, Kano, Enugu, Sokoto, Yola, Bauchi, Zaria and Oboko. For further details, visit www.rochesfoundation.org. Rochester Foundation, we educate to empower. 
Get ready for the Diaspora Festival, Badagri, Lagos, as we welcome diasporans. Our ancestors walked through the door of no return. Now we walk through the door of return. And also to celebrate the cultural heritage of Nigeria. Theme, Voyage to Heritage, featuring a lot of exciting activities like the historic Door of Return ceremony, carnival procession, boat regatta, dark era procession, fishing competition, heritage site visits, international music concerts, an international symposium, theme, African diaspora beyond the Atlantic, and lots more. Date. 23rd to 25th of August 2017. For sponsorship and more information, please call. Come and join the voyage to heritage. See you there. This is to inform the general public that the 2017 Federal Civil Service Week is scheduled to begin on Friday, 4th August 2017, with a special Jumat prayer at the National Mosque Abuja, time 2 p.m. Media chat and interactive session with Nigerians by the head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyo Ita, on Radio Link, a flagship program of Radio Nigeria, time 8 a.m. This will be followed by sporting activities at the main bowl of the Abuja National Stadium time 10 a.m. Interdenominational Thanksgiving service at the Living Faith Church Jahi Abuja. Date Sunday 6th August 2017 time 10 a.m. Handing over of keys to public servant beneficiaries of the fish program at Kurudu Fish Estate. Date Monday 7th August 2017 time 10 a.m. This will be followed by a press briefing at the Abbasanjo Hall, office of the head of the civil service of the Federation, time 4 p.m. Winifred Oyo Ita, head of the civil service of the Federation, announcer. National Council for Arts and Culture, Abuja presents 10th African Arts Crafts Expo, AFAC Expo 2017, the biggest arts and crafts expo in Africa. Theme, Nigerian Crafts, the untapped treasure. Date, 27th August to 17th September 2017. Venue, Arts and Crafts Village, the Syed Sheraton Hotel and Yaradua Center, Abuja. Time, 9 a.m. daily. AFAC presents a unique platform for artists, craft dealers, manufacturers and other stakeholders to buy, sell and promote products from Nigeria and other African countries. For more information, please call Chiwe on 0803-321-7724, Gerald on 0802-3345-301, National Council for Arts and Culture, Our Culture, Our Pride, Otumba Olushago Ronshewe, Director General Announcer. The funeral of Lady Harriet Ihuerulam Obiefule, aged 88 years, has been announced by the family. Lady Obiefule passed on peacefully in March 2017. Service of songs and tributes to her will be held on Friday, 4th August 2017, while funeral service and internment will take place on Saturday, 5th August at Obiefule Family Compound, Oguemi Isiala, Umozu in Ukwangile, local government area of Imo State. She was a devout Christian and a mentor to many women and girls, freely counseling and teaching them domestic arts, sewing, handcrafts, and agriculture. Culture. She was also a notable women leader who galvanized women in her domain for meaningful community development activities. She is survived by many children, grand and great grandchildren, sons in law, and relatives, including Mr. Charles Chikizie. Well, you're welcome back. Nigerian Air Force establishes research unit in Plato State. Ruth has details from. I just network center. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ogochi. Good afternoon and welcome to JOS. The Nigerian Air Force will soon commence the development of the permanent site of 205 Combat Search and Rescue Units at Kerang in Mangu local government area of Plata State. Air Officer Commanding Special Operation, Operation Command Bauchi, Air Vice Marshal Sadiq Keita, made this known when he inspected the 100-hectare site designated for the project. 
the Nigerian Air Force Special Operation Command 205 Combat Search and Rescue Unit is to serve as an emergency center in cases of insecurities and assist civil search and rescue operations. The Air Officer Commanding Special Operation Command, Bauchi, Air Vice Marshal Sadiq Keita said since the command and unit are both new, officers must carry out their duties with diligence and prudence. Construction work is going to start very soon. Uh, that's why I'm here. The platforms and the equipment that will make the base or the unit to function properly will be provided in due course. The AOC in company of other senior officers paid a courtesy call on the Mishkara Marvel Dan Nelson Bakfu to solicit cooperation and synergy with their host community. Mishkara Marvel gave the assurance of his support as he called on the unit to consider using the youth of the area for the construction work. Meanwhile, the AOC Air Vice Marshal Sadiq Keita was also at the government house Rayfield to intimate the government of the state on plans to commence work at the permanent site. The 100 hectare land when developed will house office complex, residential quarters and helipad for takeoff and landing of helicopters. As the airlifting of the 2017 Muslim pilgrims to Saudi Arabia commences, Plata State's government has assured the state Hajj board and all intending pilgrims of its support for a hitch-free Hajj. Plata State's Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs and Aminu Hajj for the 2017 Hajj operations, Deya Bugarga, gave the assurance at the opening of sensitization and enlightenment workshop organized for the intending pilgrims by the board. Abdul Wahab Babankanti tells us more. The lecture which is part of the preparations for the Hajj exercise is to enrich pilgrims with basic tenets of Islam, expectations and right of Hajj, right attitude and conventional practices during and after the exercise. The Enlightenment program is to, with a reasonable number of Islamic scholars, dwelling strictly on how Prophet Muhammad performed Hajj during his lifetime. The Amir Hajj, the Yebu Garga, said that the state government has put in place mechanism to monitor all activities, warning against any action or misconduct that could dent the image of the state. In both parties is to ensure business and work together as a team to ensure that any problem arising from any intended programs, the management must be up and doing to ensure that they are there for them. The acting executive secretary of the board, Ayuba Salihu Kwande, asked the intended programs to pay attention to the issues that discussed at the workshop, noting that the board is prepared to begin the airliftment of its programs from 22nd as agreed with their air carriers. We have screened the programs. Uh, we are now on the education and enlightenment of pilgrims. 1,104 self and government sponsors, including the 2014 deferees from the state, are expected to participate in the 2017 Hajj operation. It just Abdullah Babankan T N T A News. Research indicates that 350 to 400 million new cases of venereal diseases are discovered worldwide each year. It is against this background that a badge B Corps member, Dr. Ejima Blessing, organized a free venereal disease awareness campaign for students at the University of Jos. Kim Gotts has this report. That was the presentation of clinical features of some venereal diseases by the project coordinator, Dr. Ajima Blessing, to the students of University of Jos. 
medical tests to ensure early detection and control of HIV and hepatitis B were carried out on the students of the institution and hepatitis B vaccination administered to those with negative results. Dr. Blessing, organizer of the exercise who is currently serving with the University of Jules Health Clinic, said with the high cases of sexually transmitted diseases among students, the need to create awareness became imperative. How do you live your lifestyle to make sure you prevent exposure to these STDs and how do you catch it young whenever you have it and treat it appropriately to prevent the complications? Some students speak on the free medical check. As from now henceforth, I know how to prevent myself from such kind of sexual intercourse diseases and not the prevention now and still I can advise my friends too. The youth of nowadays don't like going for tests to know their status. It was good. The medical awareness with the theme, get tested, vaccinated and stay healthy, is in collaboration with University of Jaws Medical Corps members. In Jaws, Kim Coates, NT News. 260 graduate unemployed youth and women are undergoing intensive training that will make them self-reliant. The program tagged Fadama Guys Graduate Unemployed Youth and Women Support is organized by Fadama 3 Additional Financing in Bauchi. The report. The overall goal of the project is to reduce the number of unemployed youths and women in the country by engaging them in various enterprises like livestock production, poultry farming, horticulture, others are aquaculture and crop production, among others. In his remarks, State Coordinator of Adama 3 Additional Financing, Dr. Aligabe said, a total of 542 graduates applied in the state, 268 were eligible, and they will be trained for the next two weeks, out of which 200 with the best business plan will be selected and eligible to be supported with about 700 to 900,000 naira to establish their chosen business while the remaining 68 will be linked to financial institutions. What I hear is to you to see how we can support you in areas and companionships that you are excited for the first separate remarks representative of the provost college of agriculture professor laden shehu and dean of school of agri abubakar sifabalewe university dr harun abdullahi appreciated the gesture and said they will put in their best possible to transform the graduates to entrepreneurs by the end of the training in bochi bulak afsa nca news and that's it from joss it's back to ogechi for the rest of the news nationwide Thank you, Ruth. On a patriotic note, prominent Nigerians on NTA Current Affairs program moment for Toth are calling for caution over restructuring, emphasizing that social inclusion is the key to solving our differences. It means different things to different people. And my own understanding is that it is the elite who these are the leaders who, who relate and cooperate with each other to irresponsibly consume most of the resources of the majority. Yes. Restructuring is not our problem. Yeah. The problem we have is simply the problem of us to appreciate the fact that we need really to be statesmen. Statements predicated on nationhood, nationalism, patriotism, discipline. Moment for thought comes up tonight at 10.30 p.m. on NTA Network Service. The Southeast Zonal Office of the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons has opened in Enugu with a two-day workshop for grassroots enlightenment. Governor Fanyu Guanye, who inaugurated the office, called for grassroots mobilization within the geopolitical zone for proper use of the center. Che Gonaro completes this story. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The office complex is expected to decentralize activities and consolidate channels of communication within the focal points of 36 states. It is a step to bring down and closer to the people the issues relating to migrants. Declaring the workshop open, the state governor, who was represented by the deputy governor, Cecilia Ezilo, commended the National Commission 
for migrants, refugees, and internally displaced persons for getting down to the grassroots as it will help the rural dwellers understand the workings of the commission. It is therefore a very much welcome initiative, particularly at this time, when incidents of conflict, natural disasters that sought people to migrate have been on the increase. The National Commissioner, Hajia Sadia Omar Farouk, stated that the siting of the office complex is born out of the huge percentage of diaspora population from the southeast and as such a catchment area. We have a zonal office here that's here to serve the people of Southeast as it regards to issues of migration, refugees and IDPs. Participants were drawn from government institutions and civil society organizations. The workshop has as its theme diaspora engagement, practical guide and the need for clearer policy direction. In Enugu, Chiegon Aro, NTA News. We're still staying with the Enugu as the government there procures science and technology equipment. This is another story. This is a link up with Chiari in that center. Hello. Okay, Chi, good afternoon. I'm Chiegono. Enugu State Governor Ifani Uguay says the state is ready to partner UNICEF in programs that will promote health care delivery, especially for women and children. The governor was speaking when he received a delegation from Nigeria country office of UNICEF at Government House, Enugu. Ijoma Ogweke tells us the details. The governor acknowledged that over the years, the state has been a key beneficiary of the organization's assisted programs, which has impacted positively on the lives of the people. The governor highlighted some of the commitments by the state government to further promote the reputation of the state as a child-friendly state. Thank you today, a mother, a child-friendly state, and has continued to earn bonds to the free maternal and child health care program, which is a core component of social protection. We are proud to report that the impact of the program is being felt in all corners of the state. Leader of the delegation, while appreciating Governor Uguani for his support to the success of the organization's programs in the state, praised him for his efforts in protecting the rights of children in the state. If we have a vision like yours, if we have a commitment, a drive like you have demonstrated, in a very short time, we can reverse many of those indicators. He also commended the governor for his leadership style, which he said centered on people-oriented governance. In Enugu, Ijamu Gweke, NTN News. Enugu state government is set to host 54 African countries in October this year as they converge for the World Music and Dance Festival. The Director General Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization, CBAC, Dr. Ferdinand Anikwe, disclosed this when he paid a courtesy visit to the state governor, Chief Ifani Uguanyi. Here are the details. Promoting the rich cultural heritage of the African continent and integrate the diverse richness of core values and natural endowment of different ethnicities. The state governor, who was represented by the deputy governor, pledged to put all needed machinery in motion to play host to Africa. She expressed profound determination to ensure that peace and security of lives and property of all the visiting countries are secured. I want to talk of cultural, dance, language, and music, and it's going to put to rest the prediction of some good Western scholars that in 16 years to come, Dr. Ferdinand Anikwe pointing out that it will boost the economic base of the state as well as attract foreign investors. Part of what we are going to do is to sensitize the public in Enugu to be aware, to be also properly uh, groomed to receive uh, strangers. The Director General later had an interaction with a royal father. The traditional ruler advocated where the traditional institution is made part of government. It's our own duty to maintain culture, let everybody pay more attention to traditional institutions. The royal father is the founder of the Association for Christians, Muslims and Traditional Religion in Enugu. 
In a bid to reduce crime to the minimum in Imo State, the State Police Commissioner, in partnership with the state government, has launched a new security squad with a mandate to flash out all criminal elements in the state. Kinsley Ononiwu tells us more. The operational vehicles to be used by the members of the squad are equipped with modern communication gadgets that will help them carry out their mandates effectively and commended Governor Rocha Sokrocha for his financial and logistic support. The government and people of Imo State, His Excellency the Executive Governor, uh, for the financial magnanimity he has invested in this project. Security is about funds. Governor Rocha Sokrocha, represented by his Chief of Staff, Chief Uchengosu commended the Commissioner of Police and his team for effectively reducing the rate of crime in the state. We also enjoined the residents of the state to cooperate with Nigeria police in crime fights. The Imo State Police Command has done very well. Crimes in Imo State have been reduced to the minimum level. Members of the new security outfit, which we are trained in Israel by the Israeli National Guard will be stationed only in all the nooks and cranny of the state capital in over Kingston and NTA News. The need to engage in meaningful dialogue has been identified as a veritable tool for resolving inter-ethnic dispute and charting a new course for a better Nigeria. Amaka Owo reports that this, among other issues, took center stage at the National Youth Dialogue held recently in Enugu. Available statistics reveals that youths constitute over 65% of the nation's workforce and 70% of the nation's electorate. These the convener of the meeting and chairman of the National Youth Dialogue Group, Dr. Gideon Osi said, makes it imperative for the path of the youth to be redirected towards resolving issues in areas of national interest. The process of nation building is impossible without dialogue, and there is no substitute. Other members of the South East Youth Leaders Consultative Forum, who took turns to contribute to the subjects for discussion, emphasized the need for those agitating for various interests to sheath their swords, noting that the strength of the nation is in unity, in diversity. We need to dialogue because a lot of us, the youth of this country, cut across all the six geopolitical zones, has been misinformed. We want equity, we want justice, we want fairness. The members also advise youth to avoid heating up the polity through the social media. They also said they should rather work towards building lasting legacies. In Enugu, Amaka O, NTN News. That report wraps it up from here. Ogechi. Thanks for coming to Enugu. Thank you. Chair, going to talk in sports now. Tamara Biwe is our guide.